Today's lesson is 9-3, constant rate of change and slope. There will be two parts to this lesson today. One where we talk about constant rate of change, and the second is the slope. So, part one, rate of change. Two definitions I have for you today, rate of change, and that describes how one quantity changes in relation to another quantity. If you can think of a while back, we talked about unit rates, rates, and unit rates. This is very, very, very similar. So if you understand what a rate was and a unit rate was, it's very similar to what we're talking about today. Constant rate of change is when this change is the same thing throughout the whole time. So maybe it goes up by two the whole time or up by five the whole time. That's what we mean by constant rate of change is consistently changing um, the farther you go up or the farther you go down. So two vocabulary words, rate of change, describes how one quantity changes in relation to another, and the constant rate of change is when it's consistently changing the same thing. All right, so they're going to have you do two things today. They're going to have you get a constant rate of change off a table, and we'll do a few examples of those, and they're going to ask you to find a constant rate of change off a, a, a graph. So we'll do both of those things so you can see how it looks. So maybe distance is miles. I'm just going to make some things up here. Distance, let's say this is miles. Let's say this is hours, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to see if it's consistent. So if I look up here, I can see this is constantly going up by 2, okay? Here, this is constantly going up by 12. So you could say for every 12 miles, you, it takes you 2 hours, Okay. Now, this isn't the, con the constant rate of change yet. When we have constant rate of change, there's always going to be broken down to 1. Like if you think back to unit rate, it's basically going to be the unit rate. What's it consistently going up? So if you think unit rate, we always broke things down to 1. Well, the constant rate of change here would be for every 6 miles, for every 1 hour, you go up 6 miles. This would be the constant rate of change. It's always broken down into 1 for you. So sometimes your table's already going to be in ones, um, sometimes it's not. So if it's not already up by ones, then you have to reduce to make it be the, like that unit rate. Okay, here's another example. Um, let's say we have money, let's say dollars and days. Okay, that's a pretty easy one. So let's look and see what's happening here. We're going up by one, but look at this going down by 20. So you could say it goes down $20 for every one day. Now if you look at this, this is already broken into the unit rate, so you don't have to do that. But you can have constant rate of change be a negative too because it could go down the same amount every time. So here's an example off a tape or off a, a graph. Let's say this is days. And let's say this is books. Okay. So I'm going to pull off my coordinate pairs here. So like this would be 1, 2. This would be 2, 4. And this would be 3, 6. And I'm just going to put those in a table. So for every, let's do days. And let's do books. So I'm going to break them off and I'm going to put them on a table. So every one day, the person reads two books. For every two days, the person reads four books. For every three days, the person reads six books. So you can tell, look at my table, I'm going up by ones here, and this I'm going up by twos. So this tells me for every one day, this person reads two books. This is how you'd find a constant rate of change from a graph. I took off the coordinate pairs, I put them in a table, saw what was going on, if it was going up, down, whatever, and then I wrote it in my constant rate of change format right here. And remember, it has to be like the unit rate broken down into one. So we talked about how to get a, a constant rate of change off a, t a graph, and we also talked about how to getting them off tables. Okay. So the second part today is slope. And some of you are scared of slope. Some of you are nervous to do slope because maybe you had a bad experience last year. But it's really not too hard if you pay attention and you take some good notes. So first few definitions of slope. Slope. Everything has slope for the most part. And slope is the steepness of a line. Almost everything has a little slope. The rise is the vertical change. 
means vertical, means up and down. And the run is the horizontal change, so this way. And this is really how we write slope, rise over run, or y over x. And a lot of times people remember it as the sun rises over you as you run. So that's a way people remember how to do slope. It's always rise over run. For the most part, when we graph a, t a coordinate player, we always go the run first and then the rise. But this is the opposite of graphing a point. You go up first and then over. So slope is just a tad different. But if you get the hang of it, it's not too difficult. Now, there are four different types of slopes. So you have to make sure you have this in your notebook because this is going to come back. And we're going to talk about this quite often. So the first different type of the first type of slope is positive slope. The, the line for a positive slope always goes up towards the right. And this is just a number example of what a positive slope would look like. Oops. A number example. So getting all of the number examples down too is a good idea. Good idea. Okay. If I go to negative slope, this is negative slope. And negative slope always goes down to the right. And this is a number example of negative slope. It has a negative in front of the number. And we'll talk a little bit more about these numbers in a second. The third type of slope is zero slope. This is when the line stays horizontal. Okay. And this is a number example of zero slope. Okay. And the last one is undefined. Undefined is a vertical line. I think I spelled that wrong. I think it's payo. There we go. Vertical line. This is a number example. Notice how zero slope has the zero on top and undefined has the zero on the bottom. You have to know the difference between the two, so that's why I'm giving you some examples of what it looks like as a number. Okay, so we know the four types, positive, negative, zero slope, and undefined slope. All right, so how do you find slope? Okay, uh, a lot of times they'll have a line on a graph, and you have to use that line to find the slope. If you have a positive slope, then line is going to be running this way. If you have a negative slope, the line's going to be running down. And I'm just going to go to the next one. Okay, so how do you find slope? What you do on your line is you find two points on your line. I'm going to pick point A and I'm going to pick point B. I'm going to find the slope between these two lines. Now, if you remember correctly, slope is rise over run. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to start at one of my dots, preferably the one farthest probably to the left. And I'm going to go up to where I'm even with my next dot. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. So I rose four spots. So my rise would be four. Now I'm going to start at that spot that I left off, and I'm going to go over to my next dot. This is considered my run. So I'm going to figure out how many boxes I have to get to my B. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This would be the slope of this line. 4 over 7 means I go up 4 over 7. And then I can use this to figure out where my next dot would be. If I wanted to know where my next dot would be, I go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. My next dot would be here, and that would be continuing my straight line. So I can use slope to predict where my next line is going to be, or my next dot. All right, let's try another one. Let's try this one. Notice how the slope is going down to the left. So I already know that my slope is going to be negative. So I'm going to start at this dot right here. Or this dot right here. It doesn't really matter. And I'm probably going to start at A because I have to rise to B. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So my rise and my run is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight, nine, and it's a negative slope because the line is going this way. And then when you have slope, you always want to reduce it. So this would be negative 2 over 3. That's what my slope would be. And I can tell where my next slope would be by going over, I suppose, where my next dot would be. I could go over, uh, let's see, I could go, I want to go over 9 and down 6, and that's where my next slope would be. For this one, 
Notice how there's no there's only one dot on it, but it's going through the origin, so you can use the origin as a dot. So I'm going to go from this dot to this dot. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my rise is 5. My run is 1, 2, 3. My, run, my slope is 5 over 3. Now we never, ever change it to a mixed number format. Because if I would change this to 1 and 2 thirds, I don't know what this means in terms of slope. How many do I go up? How many do I go, go over? So anytime you have slope, you leave it as an improper fraction. Don't change it. It's not even known as a fraction. It's slope format. So don't think you have to change it to a mixed number because that won't even make sense to slope. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is sometimes instead of giving you a graph to find slope, they're just going to give you the two points. They're just going to give you um, the coordinate pairs of your two points. So I want you to write this down because this is an equation for you to follow. So slope and m, I have m there because a lot of times when they talk about slope, they give it the variable m. And this says the point of y2 minus the point of y1. And this says the point of x2 minus the point of x1. Okay, so this is how it works. And I'm going to rewrite it. So it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Here's the two points that were on our graph right here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label them. This is going to be point 1, and this is going to be point 2. So this is like me on my graph, find, like instead of graphing it and finding the slope, I can do it with just with this equation. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write x and y and x and y because this is going to tell me what the different x and y's are in my point 1 and my point 2. So I'm going to start with the top. It says y2 minus y1. So what is point, point 2? What's the y in point 2? So the y in point 2 is negative 3 minus What's the y in point 1? Well, the y in point 1 is 1. Okay, then I have, what's the x in point 2? The x in point 2 is 0. What's the x in point 1? It's negative 2. Now I'm going to start to solve. Well, up here I have negative 3 minus 1. I'm going to have to keep change change. So this is going to be negative 4. And I have 2 minus neg or 0 minus negative 2. I'm going to keep change here, and I get 2. Now I reduce to negative 2 over 1, and this is my slope of that line. So if I, would, if I had it on a graph, and this is what it looked like, and this is what it looked like, this is like me finding the slope, except for just doing it with the points given to me instead. All right, let's do one more. And I'm going to rewrite it. Y2, I like to see it. So I know what I'm doing. Okay, so this is point one. This is point two. This is my x and this is my y. This is my x and this is my y. So first of all, what is the y in point two? I hope you said four. What's the y in point one? It's one. What's the x in point two? One. What's the x in point 1? 0. Now I just saw 4 minus 1 is 3. 1 minus 0 is 1. My slope for these, this line, is 3 over 1. So I know it was a long lesson today, but it's a good lesson and things that we can review together when I see you next class period. So please make sure you come with questions the next time I see you. Thanks for watching till the end.